if I, if you're qualifying and hit, hit diamond, say I hit diamond in August, I don't qualify for this quarter. I would qualify for the next quarter. Yeah. For the fourth quarter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be diamond for six weeks in that first quarter to get that first 250 or Megan at two star, it's about 800, $900. When you get up to five star, it gets into the 4,000, 5,000 range. When you get 10 star, it's into like $10,000 and 15 star is like 17, 20. So. But Michelle, if Sonia hits diamond in August, and holds that for six weeks, as long as it's in, like as long as you basically you get to diamond before August or August. on August, whatever that date is, and hold that, you'll still get it. Yeah, if someone holds, if you become a diamond on August 23rd is the absolute last date you can become a diamond, and then you have to hold it for six weeks to get quarter three. And then, that, and then it starts all over again. Those six weeks do not count for quarter four. So on October 4th, it's a whole, for all of us in the company, it's a whole new ball game. You have to hold it again for six weeks in that time frame. Yes, and you're right, um, Darlene, for um, the diamond pool, I don't think it matters for two star and five star, or maybe it does, I, I'm not sure, but you have to have success club as well. You have to have success club five. Is it five? Yeah, five. Um, you have to have success club five and you have to hold that six weeks. Each what? For each of the three months in the quarter. Each of the three months? In the quarter. I don't know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Terry just mentioned it has to be, you have to have success club every single month. So it's not like you can just have success club for those six weeks or that one time frame. You just have to always have success club. Like just don't even worry about when you have to have success club. You just have to always make success club. And then you have to hold it for the six weeks. Then you'll get the, the cash Ola. Oh my God. That became more confusing. <laughs> even to me. <laughs> um, something else was, I was thinking about something else, but I can't remember. Anyways, does that make sense to everybody? Cool. So, I mean, the name of this game is you need to be inviting to coaching. It doesn't matter if you've been a coach for five minutes. It is time to start feeling confident about that. I'm going to share with my team uh, or to my personally sponsored coaches, some, a new graphic, a new tracker that's called win the week. And it's something that both Megan and I learned at leadership and I've shared it with all the leaders. So everyone, if you want it, contact your upline because this is the new tracker that we're going to start using tomorrow. And one of the things you have to do every week, and it doesn't matter if you've been a coach for two minutes or 200 days, you have to invite to your team. You have to start showing some confidence around that. That is how you get to these big numbers. And you know, everyone messages me and they want to know how they're going to make more money and how they're going to retire and how that's how you do it. You're never, ever, ever going to make a lot of money just selling challenge packs ever. I promise you. I, you know, I tried it. I made as much money as you possibly could on as little sleep as someone could function selling challenge packs. Like I, I actually got up to about $600 a week selling challenge packs. And if that's your goal, that's cool. Then you go sell challenge packs. But if you want to go above and beyond that, you need to get comfortable inviting to your team and growing your team. What I see a lot of is we hit these ranks, we hit diamond or we get really close to diamond and we stop inviting. It's like you think, okay, I'm, I'm diamond now. I'm good. Like, this is good. Nothing magical happens when you become a diamond. Your pay doesn't really increase. Nothing happens. It's really just, a, it's a rank. It's a shout out. So you get some recognition, you feel good and you should because it's a major accomplishment but you have to keep on growing your team to get farther, to make more money, to, um, 
you know, get farther up in this system. No. I'm losing my tra train of I thought. Found, yes. I found that. You found Clarice. That is awesome. You keep her close by for Christmas. Okay, goodbye. Okay. So let's get on to um, the, the, the real meat of the call. What I want to talk about is what Shailene Johnson talked about. So first thing I want you guys to do is like totally open your mind to new information. So maybe the things that you heard from your upline a couple months ago, maybe you're going to have to think about your posts the way you're talking in conversations a little bit differently. Because what I know for sure is in three years of doing this, I have changed up the way I post, I've changed up my social media sharing, I've changed up my conversations constantly. I am not afraid of change. If you are the type of person that's afraid of change, you're gonna have to really work on your, your yourself in that manner because the only thing I know for sure about social media is every single day it's changing and every single day you're going to have to try new things and every single day you're going to have to fail forward and what worked last week might not work this week. If you are seeing that you're not getting lots of traction, if you're seeing that some stuff that worked last month or six months ago isn't necessarily working that well anymore, it's time to change it up. Don't beat a dead horse figure out something new. And the way you do that is get on to podcasts, get on to YouTube videos, listen, go to summit, go to super Saturday. That's where the, the top people in this, you know, in this industry are sharing best practices and sharing when things change. And that's what she did for us for 25 minutes. She talked to us about how everything's changed. So last year, I probably did several calls about attraction marketing. We wanted to attract your people. You wanted, the way you posted, it was all about attraction marketing. That has all changed. That has all gone out the window, basically because there's a lot more of us and the people watching us have become really smart. There's so many network marketers on Facebook, on Instagram, everywhere now and the customer the people that we're trying to talk to are sick of us they're really tired of being sold to like honestly they do not want to see another picture of someone sucking on their shakeology cup they are so over it they don't care and the minute they see that they unfollow you they're done because they think that you're trying to sell them something so it's time to figure out a new way to connect with people. And this is what she shared with us. So I actually have a couple slides that I'm going to bring up here just so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. Oops. Okay. Maybe. Can you guys see that? Does someone unmute themselves? Because I can't see you anymore. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so borrowed words are for the birds. She kind of put everything into rhyme just so we would remember it. So this is really critical, you guys. I know that we love and I encourage, I, I think we all encourage each other to watch top coaches in your upline or watch top coaches in the industry. The problem is though, myself, I've already spent three years building up a really awesome audience. So the people that I'm talking to right now already trust me. So I am able to talk in a different way than someone that has just started should be talking. If you're watching Melanie Mitro or Bonnie Engel and you're copying and pasting what they say, it's not going to make sense because it doesn't sound authentic from you. It doesn't, you know, match your story. So it's time to, you know, it's fine to take ideas from coaches. That's totally fine to get, see a quote that they used and then figure out your own spin on it. Or get the, I do this all the time. I watch so many different coaches and I'll see a post and I'll be like, okay, that's a really cool idea for a post. 
but I don't like copy and paste the words. I go to my notepad and think, okay, now how could I make that my own story? How can I take that idea because it spoke to me? How can I make that, you know, to, to follow my mission, to, to talk to my audience? And that's what you really, really need to start doing. You have to really be using your own words and being really authentic to yourself. Um, right now, what's happening on social media is everybody is copying each other. And now everything just looks really inauthentic. You know, people are sick of seeing the same posts over and over again. And I mean, this, like our team is very localized for some of us, right? So if all of a sudden someone's seeing like the same thing on different pages, they're like, oh my God, like this, this whole team Beachbody stuff, they just have one big pool of posts and they all use them. And that's not what we do at all. Like that's not what we do. So we definitely don't want to give people that idea. I mean, Megan and I run into this a lot. And quite frankly, I, as much as I love Megan, I do not go to her page ever because we think very similarly and we have the same very similar kind of niche market. Um, so we often post similar and we don't even like, her sister is someone that will message her and say, Oh my God, you and Michelle post the same thing at the same time. And Megan will message me that. And, and then we'll be like, okay, let's go check out our posts. And they are quite similar. And we don't love that that happens. It, it just happens. And I think it's because we talk all the time and we're kind of in the same like wavelength, but it's not really ideal. Like it's, that's why I purposely don't go to her page. I love her posts. It would be easy for me to copy and paste them because they would say, talk to my similar audience and they would make a lot of sense, but I want to sound like me. I don't want to sound like her. So be really careful about these sort of borrowed words. And of course she put this funny little rhyme, like borrowed words are for the birds. So keep that in mind. Um, okay. Next one. Don't tell me you're about to sell me. So what, when I mentioned earlier about um, attraction marketing, what we did in attraction marketing was often mentioned or slipped in 21 day fix or slipped in Shakeology or right now I would have slipped in somewhere like, are you ready to make the shift? Like shift shop, like I would slip it in. And that's not working anymore because everybody gets it. As soon as they see those words, they're gone. I want you to imagine yourself shopping. And this is the analogy she used and I loved it because it spoke to me because this is me exactly. If I go into a store, I want all salespeople to FO. Like don't come near me unless I actually ask for your help. But what happens? You're, you're going through the, the clothing rack and all of a sudden you can feel it, right? You can feel that person coming up behind you and she is going to pounce and tell you you look awesome in that outfit that you know you look like shit in. You know, like they are just gonna drive you crazy. And what does it do? It makes you want to leave the store immediately. Even if there was like this outfit that you thought you were gonna look like the bomb in, you don't even want to try it on anymore because she is driving you insane and she's just being pushy. So it has actually repelled you. So what you want to do is just create curiosity. So it's not called attraction marketing anymore. It's called curiosity marketing. People are absolutely 100% sick of network marketing. They're sick of seeing it. They're sick of opening up their Facebook and being sold to but they're hundred percent interested in your story. You know, reality TV and your reality show is still very interesting to them. So if you just create curiosity around what you're doing, you don't blurb out what you're doing, but you create this little bit of interest. So I've, I've tried to do it all week. So I don't, if you're following my post, you'll see that I'm talking about my ramped up program, my agility program, um, 
like I'm not using shift shop, obviously. Like I'm not using any of that verbiage in my posts. The first post I did was right when Shailene was on stage and I did a post about, I'm sitting here listening to the person that was my, you know, my first inspiration to get into health and fitness. And it, and it was the truth. I started with, you know, one of my first programs was Turbo Jam. She was the first person I had on a DVD to exercise to. So I did a post about that. I never mentioned her name. I never mentioned where I was. I didn't say Team Beachbody Summit, nothing like that. And I did have a few people message me and say, well, who was it? Who was you? Who was the first person that, you know, inspired you? So I created this curiosity and people then messaged me with questions. And that's what you want. You want to create enough curiosity that people feel compelled to message you. And then you can carry on the conversation like we've taught you to do, connecting building a relationship and that will turn into whatever you want it to turn into. So does that make sense to people that instead of, you know, Shakeology this and Shakeology that you might use the word superfoods or you might use the word, you know, the verbiage. I'm so tired today. This is going to, you know, kick my ass. I'm going to get more energy. Like, I don't know what, however you guys talk, but the, the, the premise of the whole thing is to not use the words. Don't use the company name. Don't use the branded name. Like as I've told you a million times, Beachbody spends thousands, millions, quadrillions of dollars promoting the 21 day fix and promoting shift shop. We don't need to promote that word because you know what happens when we promote it? Everybody knows about Google. Everybody sees shift shop. So if you've talked about shift shop this week, and put it in your posts, I guarantee you one, if not 10 people have Googled shift shop and then they've gone to beachbody.com or they've gone to Amazon and they've bought it there. If you talk about being a team Beachbody coach, you know what people do? They go Google it and you know what they find? One of two things. They either find so much negative talk about being a beach body coach that now they will never even talk to you about doing it or two they find a really awesome blog that talks about how amazing beach body coaches is, are and how much money they can make and how awesome it is and how it's changed their life and now they message that person and they do not talk to you about it google our world, we all know about it now. You know, five years ago, people wouldn't have. Now, what's the first, what's, if I have a question, I Google it. That's what people do. And I for sure, if I think about myself, I would never, ever have messaged a coach. If she was saying, you know, message me about my blah, 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 blah. I would never have done that. I would have been too insecure to, I didn't want anyone to think I was, you know, it would be like calling myself out. I just never would. I would have Googled it. And like I did, I just ordered things off the infomercial and never had any help. So you want to give them just little tidbits. So it encourages them to message you with, because they're so curious about what you're doing. Okay. Um, and then the next one here. So likes wear thin, questions are what win. So, I mean, I kind of just went through that, right? Is instead of thinking about your likes, now we have to, have to chat about this a little bit because you still want lots of likes on your posts because that's how we connect with new people. So don't, when you read that, don't think to yourself, oh, now I don't want likes. Like I just was thinking about that's who I messaged every day. Still do that. Like I'm still doing that. When I have... 30 likes on my page, I still message them all and say, hi, thank you for supporting my message. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about don't be so wrapped up in getting likes because they don't really mean much. It's the questions that you're getting. So in all your posts now, from now on, that you're, when you're creating this curiosity, track how many questions you're getting. How many messages are you getting? So for example, yesterday, I had five messages from people that asked me, 
So you keep talking about this kind of like agility program. What is it? Like, what is it you're doing? Is it something on YouTube? <laughs> so I actually was, I, I loved that. A, because these people did not know I was a coach. They really had no idea. They knew I was like helping people. They knew that they could get something from me, but they weren't sure. And then they, they asked me point blank, what is this program? So then I could go and connect. And then I would say, oh yeah, it's, it's actually something that I'm doing. I stream it. Are you into working out? Well, yeah, I'm looking for a new program. Oh, do you like agility style, st style stuff? Like, are you trying to lose weight or are you an athlete athletic already? Like I was able to have these amazing conversations all stemmed from this first post that was just creating curiosity. So you kind of, I guess a good way to describe it is leaking out details. So it's not that what you're doing is wrong. I want you guys to know that. Like, I think we've talked a lot about jabs and hooks and how to create really awesome posts. So it's not what we're doing is wrong. We just want to take away that really like blatant 21 day fix hashtag or talking about all the containers, like all the real, the product knowledge, take that away and try and reword it that it just leaks out a tiny bit of detail. I, I think when I do the, the, you know, I might post a recipe and everybody can use it. It doesn't matter if you're on the 21 day fix, but at the bottom I'll say for my accountability friends, one green heart, one red heart. You don't know how many messages I get from people and they'll be like, what the fuck is with these hearts? Like, what are you talking about? What are these hearts? I don't get these hearts. You know, and I've put in there like one cup, three quarters of a cup, you know, I've put the recipe for them. But when I put that at the bottom, they're like, what is that? Why is she talking about hearts? Like it does, it creates this little bit of curiosity. Okay. Um, don't lead with the company. Like obviously that, that's what I just kind of went through. I just want to make sure I'm not missing something here. Um, for new coaches, and I think we probably every upline talks about this. First of all, in Beachbody, you're not allowed to have Beachbody in your name. Okay, so if you're making a page name or you're making a private support group, you can't have it called Val's Beachbody page. Okay, so legally you can't do that. But also, if you want to have zero followers besides your family, that's a really great way to do it because nobody wants to join a beach body page right now. <laughs> nobody, because there's so many of us, people are sick of it. So don't, don't make your coach name Val at beach body or beach body coach Val. Like don't do that. Just use your name. Like you don't need to add that stuff in because it's a surefire way of people running away from you. Okay. So definitely don't, I don't think anyone does that, but if we've missed someone in that, go change your name because you don't want that connected. You don't want that connected. Now, those posts that we do sort of like call to action posts, challenge posts, I'm just going to, how do I stop this share? I can't even see how to do this right now. Sorry, guys. Hmm. I can't see my little button here. Driving me nuts. Do you guys know where that would be? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, here we go. Perfect. Okay, there you all are. I was talking to myself there for a bit. Okay. Um, so you know the challenge group post where we would say on the bottom, um, message me for info, that kind of stuff. I think I've been doing it too much. So a couple months ago, you know, and this is where I want you guys to be open-minded because I have to be open-minded too. Um, a couple months ago, I listened to some great calls by a really cool coach. I loved her information and this is what she did. And I thought it was awesome. But if I go back and track, I don't necessarily think it's like pumped up my business at all. You know, it hasn't made anyone message me really more than they were before. So I listened to another Shailene podcast this morning and she specifically talked about that, that these CTAs, these call to action posts that actually literally say message me at the bottom, 
we still want to do them, but just like 10% of the time. So really that's kind of getting back to the basics of what we used to do. Um, your, your call to actions, it's like your hook. You don't want to be doing them too much. So I'm going to go back to that because when I go back and think, okay, you've done that for about six weeks. How has it worked for you? Hasn't changed anything. So I'll, I'll still do it. There's no question that we still have to do it because you have to give people the literal like instructions. Like if you want my help, can you please message me? <laughs> you kind of have to do that every once in a while, but get back to sort of that like 10%. So the, the sort of jab, jab hook. So you want to be jab, 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 just nice informational posts, motivational posts, creating curiosity posts most of the time. And then 10% of your post should be like that call to action. This is what I'm doing. It can still be the same type of post, but at the bottom, you're literally asking people to message you. You're literally inviting them, like you're spelling it out to them. So her recommendation is about 10% of your posts. Okay, because I, I, I questioned that myself when she talked. I'm like, okay, so now are we just not supposed to do that at all? But then how are people, so there's got to be some balance, right? So I think that's a good, I always like a number sort of balance. Does that make sense to everybody? So would that be like once or twice a week? Well, it depends how much you're posting, right, Heidi? I mean, that's all different. Doing, like I'm following the Josh Coates twice, twice a day. So that would be 14 posts. So it's 1.4. So about twice a week. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I would say. Um, once or twice a week. That's what we always said, right? Jab, yeah. jab, hook, jab, 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 hook. And your, your jabs are just leading you to that hook. So does, I don't know, that's a Gary Van, Van, Vanderchuk, is that his name? And if you, if you haven't been on those calls, we did some amazing jab, jab, hook training sort of last year, maybe December, January. So just go to my YouTube channel and find those calls because they're, even though they're old, there's still really good little nuggets in there about, about creating posts and how to really engage your audience. But remember that we're talking about curiosity marketing, not attraction marketing. So that'll be the difference if you go back to those videos because we were doing something different then. Now you just want to think about creating curiosity, leaking information, and having people ask you questions. Okay. And that's the same in our messages. You need to like figure out your comfort zone of the, of asking more questions. Stop talking about yourself and your experiences and ask people about them. You're going to have way better conversations, guys. You're going to have way better connections. And in the end, you're either going to find business partners or you're going to sell challenge packs, which will lead into all different stuff. So if you're still having trouble hitting those success club numbers and really hitting your goals, that's where you need to start looking. Okay. You need to start thinking about how are the questions I'm asking these people? How am I connecting with these people? And I think I actually haven't listened to Megan's call. It's been on my list, but I think she did a connection call with her team. That's probably recorded somewhere. Megan, is it? Um, yeah. Is it on your YouTube channel? Yeah, you can find my YouTube channel. <laughs> Would you post it maybe somewhere? somewhere? Yeah. Did I do it recently? I think it was a couple of weeks ago you told me you were doing it. Maybe you didn't do it. No, I think I did. Yeah, um, yeah and I actually did on – It's it is funny that you said that we're always on the same, like, wait, same wavelength because I literally did this very similar call on Thursday night. Um, with my team. So this was a good like little recap. Um, yeah, I'll post it. I'll find it and I'll post it in the team page then. Cool. Thank you. So it was about connecting. So, you know, asking the right questions, like literally, I think what Megan told me she was going to do, I don't know if she did, but she literally went into her message box and showed how she was going to answer and how she was going to connect with people. So I think it's really valuable. Clearly she's successful. So it's a person that you might want to take some tips from. Okay. Um, I think that is really all I got. I think the last slide, 
This is just something to pump you guys up. I'll just show it to you just one sec here. Yeah, I actually really like this because I think we all fall into this trap that we're not good enough. And one problem with following other coaches is you sometimes feel inferior and you start comparing yourself. And let me tell you, uh, I'm pretty transparent with you guys. That is one of my biggest weaknesses is feeling like I don't have as good a post or my, my, my stuff doesn't sound as good. It doesn't flow as nice. You don't need to be outstanding. Okay. So you don't need to be this amazing social media marvel. You just need to figure out how to make yourself stand out in your niche market, just your niche market. You need to find something that just tweaks yourself a little bit and how to do that is just be yourself because if you are being yourself, you are 100% going to attract people like you. They're going to like you. So stop copying, stop borrowing people's other people's stuff, like take ideas. That's fine, but make it your own. That's the only way you're going to find your people that work really well with you and that want to join you. So don't worry about being amazing and having zillions of likes on your posts. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if I have a post that has 300 likes. I post a pretty cute picture of Delaney and I have 300 likes. Those posts, sure, it gives me 300 people to message, but really, quite frankly, nothing normally comes out of it. All I need is a couple people asking me some questions every day that are really interested in what I'm doing. That's all I need. You know what, to get to you your monthly goal, what do you need? Six people really interested. Six people asking you questions. And then you can take it from there. You know, pay attention to what you like. Pay attention what, to what really grabs you. And then post about it, because that's you. That's what you love. That's what's speaking to you. And share that, because that's going to speak to your people. And now I can't find this freaking thing again. There we go. Okay, that's all I have today. What else did I, this is the notes that I took when I was there. Be mysterious, I love that. Be mysterious, right? Like just leak out, create curiosity. Don't give too much information. Don't spam people kissing your Shakeology mug. I mean, we all used to do that. So if you've done it, don't feel bad because so have I. Um, turn your cup around. So it, imagine that this said Shakeology, go like that. Just that simple tweak. People post on my, in my Facebook group all the time. What are you drinking? And I'm like, oh my God, how dumb can you be? How can you not know by now that I'm drinking Shakeology? But they do, they post underneath. Oh, what is that? Um, where do I buy superfoods? But it's perfect because I just message them and then I start a conversation. Okay, anybody have any questions? I have a question. It's about Instagram though, but once you were talking about not having like beach body in your page name or whatever, with my username on Instagram, I have it, the justified lifestyle. So should I switch that to just my name? If I'm trying to find, cause then they really know it's a business page right away, right? personally I would like I I don't know who taught me that long long time ago because I of course I was the fit files right like how dumb is that now but I mean I thought it was awesome at the time so and then I went and changed it like now it's Michelle file or Michelle Moore file and then I kind of the fit files in brackets I don't even know how I have it but it's, I think your name the thing is Justine you might not always be the justified you love the fit files in person. <laughs> um, you might not always be the justified lifestyle. Like maybe I, I, this will never happen. So never leaving, but <laughs> you know, you, you want to create yourself, right? Like it all goes back to, you want to sell yourself. You don't want to be the beach body, the fit files, like 
I might not be fit someday, but still want to use all my social media stuff, right? Or my, I hopefully will always be fit, but say some goal of mine is to just um, coach people on network marketing. So it might not be anything to do with Beachbody. Like last night, I had a little conversation with this guy that's wanting to do something online. So we sat for half an hour and I shared with everything that I know, right? So it had nothing to do with Beachbody. And it made me think, you know, I can maybe see myself branching into something like that someday. Like I really love helping people build business. So if I was only known on social media as the fit files, like how do you go in five years and change yourself and say, well, actually I'm now coaching entrepreneurs on um, social media. If I'm Michelle File, I'm just Michelle File. Like I can do whatever. If I decide I want to sell lipstick someday, I can do that too. And I think that's what I heard a long, long time ago. And that's why I sort of changed things. My support group is still the Fit File support group because I just left it that way. But like Instagram, my obviously my profile and my business page, I kind of went and said Michelle Moore File. And then I could, if I did really change things up, I could just erase the fit files on my business page eventually. The other tip that I just remembered is Shailene suggests actually going through some posts and if it's really salesy, deleting them from your page because people are doing that. People are becoming your, so I can tell you this for sure. I add about five to 10 new friends every single day. And the people that I end up connecting with have gone through my page. They have done the scroll. Like some days I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh my God, who is this Haley that has liked a picture from 2012? Or, and, and it's like, she's, I can, can, has that ever happened to you? You see it in your notifications? Like, oh my God, they just like learned about my whole life because they're, they're doing the scroll. They're figuring out who you are. So if you do have some of, if when I was talking about this stuff and you were thinking, oh my God, I can remember that time I posted that post, go find it and just delete it. Just get rid of it. She said she really did. And this might've been the podcast that I listened to this morning. So it wasn't from summit, but it was a similar kind of chat that she did. Um, she just said, do a cleanup go into your social media and clean it up a tiny little bit. So it's something to think about. If you've got some of those that are, I've got some that I need to get rid of. That's for sure. That makes you feel icky. I think a great idea would be to have your accountability partner go through your page because yeah. sometimes we might not see something or think it's salesy, but if you have an accountability or success partner, get them to go through it. I think I'm going to, task Carla with that and just have her go through and yeah that's a great sometimes another set of eyes is better right yeah I mean I am a big believer so I have Terry that's one of his jobs is that I like him to go and do my scroll do the scroll every single week to make sure I really like to make sure that I'm doing that jab 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 hook that I'm not getting too many hooks because I'm I'm I can hook a lot <laughs> So I like him to look at that. And there's often times that I don't think it's that hooky. And he's like, yeah, like that's not good. So I think that's an, that's an awesome, awesome idea. And I think it's something you should do all the time. So where I was going with that is like, I get him to do that every week or even yourself. And I've told my personally sponsored, we have this go through your last 30, 30 posts. So oftentimes in our chat thread, I will say to them, I'm on the prowl today. I'm going to your social media. If you need to clean it up, clean it up now, like go through your last 30 posts because I want, you know, I want them to know that I'm going to go look to see what kind of, you know, because there's little tweaks that make a big difference. We talked a lot this week about our selfies, you know, and when I say we, I mean like with my personally sponsored coaches, you know, make sure they're bright. All you have to do is stand in front of a window. You don't need anything magic. You don't need any amazing lights. Like really, honestly, guys, all you need to do is find a window. And the, I always get back. Yeah, but I work out in the morning in the dark basement. Okay, that's fine. Still do it. But on Sunday, go grab some workout clothes 
and go stand in front of your living room window and take some pictures of yourself. You want to have some nice, bright, clear, smiley, attractive pictures. You also want to have some pictures with your hair done, with your makeup done. It doesn't always, it shouldn't always look like this, right? This, this speaks, we did our workout and that's awesome because that's what we do. But we also want to speak like we are successful. We are business women. We are creating a new life for ourselves and our families. And that, this doesn't necessarily speak that, <laughs> you know? So the day you go to church and you look nice or you go out on a date with your husband, take a few extra pictures so you have them around. I always have some in my phone. If I freaking take the time to do my hair, that shit is tracked. <laughs> so I can go back and use them. You can put different filters on them and, and make them look different and use them on different pages and with different verbiage and they mean different things. So those are just a few things that I shared with my girls this week that's important. Like when I scroll some of these feeds, I'm like, God, that's not gonna, that's not gonna attract anybody. I'm gonna scroll right past that because it's not clear and it's not bright and it doesn't speak to me. If you wanna look at some good pictures, go to Darlene. Of course she's a photographer, but she has the brightness, the crispness, and it doesn't take long to figure out how to do that. Go to YouTube and go, like search, how do I take some good selfies? But really, go to a light, like just go to a window. So here's an example. See how bright and, it's not as good on Zoom, but see how bright and clear I am right there? How do you like me now? Okay, that's all I have to do. I look like I have makeup, I'm bright, clear skin, and then this way, I nobody even knows who I am. I look like a zombie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Darlene just said where you position your your camera and all that stuff. You don't necessarily need like now when I stand in front of a bright window and it's clear, I don't have to really filter it up that much. Like I might add something like that takes a second, but I don't go into the beauty app and firm and high and like, I don't have to do all that stuff because I'm in front of a bright window. Anyways, totally got off track again. Okay. Anybody have any questions about like what we talked about specifically or anything, any challenges? I don't know how to put makeup. <laughs> Well, that's good. You don't, if you don't, if you're not a girly girl, then you need to talk to not girly girls, Jana. That's, we're, we're all our own people. <laughs> so one, one thing that um, Josh Coates has been focused on in our training um, is your live videos to, when you're doing a live video, it's part of this curiosity marketing. Like don't say, don't title your live video something that is obvious like you want to create that curiosity so that somebody will tune in so you could say something like the biggest mistake I've made I've ever made you know and then you highlight biggest or highlight mistake and then people are like oh I wonder what that is um, just to be curious in in those videos so that's something that I'm focused on too because I would say oh uh, you know I don't know I don't even know what my other titles were, but if they're, if they're saying exactly what your video is about, people are like, ah, yeah. there's no curiosity around it. Totally. I've noticed that a lot with my um, live videos dependent on my title. Like if I do something like how to get motivated in the morning to work out, like someone's just going to think, Oh, fuck off, Michelle. I don't want to, I don't want to work out in the morning, like screw off because they know what I'm going to talk about then. Right. So if I just switch up the title, like Heidi said, it's, it's actually crazy how many more views you get. It's quite interesting. It's just like that email title, which I have never perfected the, the subject line in the email to get them to open it. Right. Like to create enough curiosity to get them to open that email. It's just kind of, a, it's a very similar thing, but okay, guys, that's all I got. Anybody else, please speak up if you have, I don't have a success partner, but if anyone feels like going through my feeds and telling me what shit I'm doing it right now and I'm literally just deleting everything that's beach body related. So yeah, but if anyone feels like they're bored and they want to go through my shit, feel free. <laughs> Maybe we'll partner people up in our chat thread, Shelby, because I think that's an awesome idea, Heidi, because really you, 
you, you don't look at your own stuff the same sometimes. So I think that's a good idea. Okay, guys, thank you so much for popping on. Have a great weekend. Bye.